this is a Sterling Elite. It's going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. In front of the van you've got your jockey wheel, hitch and handbrake. We'll demonstrate these to you in person here on site. In the front locker you have your two gas bottle tie downs where you can carry a maximum of two 6 kilogram propane gas bottles at any time. And in the front locker or in, in here you'll see that you've got your gas fitment going into the bottle. Just so you are aware this is a reverse thread fitment so you need to turn it the opposite way to a bottle cap for instance to release the fitting out of the bottle. On top of the bottle you've got gas open and gas closed. Gas open is gas on and gas closed is gas off. Obviously while you're here on site during your handover, turn the gas on, have a play with all the features on board the van and make sure you're happy with the operation. On the side of the regulator you actually have a yellow shut off valve here. Should you ever need to isolate the gas you can turn that valve 90 degrees to isolate the gas supply. Coming down the side of the caravan you've got your water pump connection which very simply pushes into the side of the van and releases as you can see and it locks in place with the blue tab at the bottom. You do need to make sure the pickup pipe is fully submerged in the water prior to turning the water pump on. If it's not you could potentially pull air up into the water system and it could cause an airlock. You then have two wind down legs on either side of the front of the caravan to stabilise the van while it's on site. You also have two on the rear coming from the back of the van and you'll see these same style of uh, nuts on the rear of the van so you can wind those legs down. Like I said, they are just there for stabilising, not lifting the van. If you lift the van with these legs, it could potentially damage the floor of the caravan. You now have your heating and hot water fluid. The guys are still cleaning the van, uh, but you'll, once you, uh, the van's, when the van's ready, ready to be taken, all this will be clean and ready to go. You do need to make sure you remove that cover prior to igniting anything on gas inside of the caravan and also operating the heating and hot water as it essentially does the same job as the flue on the side of your house. Coming further down the side of the van, you've got your battery box with your 110 amp leisure battery in there and your mains power lead coming in. You will also see the motor mover power switch in the back here which we'll demonstrate in a short while in the video and that'll be the last part of the video. Obviously again, while you're here, have a go with the motor mover and make sure you're happy with the operation. Next up is the two fridge vents. Two fridge vents are very simply there to allow the hot air at the back of the fridge unit and to take some cool air in so it doesn't get too hot in the back of there. And behind one of those you'll also find a gas flue for when the fridge is running on gas. Motor mover and wheel nuts is a PowerTouch Evolution Auto Engage which like I said we'll demonstrate at the end and then we'll talk the wheel nuts prior to taking the caravan from site so you can see they've been tightened correctly. The fresh water that goes in the front of the caravan has to come out somewhere and that's what these two grey pipes are for down the side of the van. So you'll have two bits of grey pipe that go into these larger diameter holes and then they'll drop down inside the waste master. Um, these will be part of your startup pack so you'll get those later on in the handover. You've then got the toilet flush tank, a toilet flush tank at the top here. You'll open this up, put the key in and open it up. You'll need to put three and a half litres of water in here and a cap full of the pink fluid that comes as part of your startup pack as well. Toilet locker, toilet cassette's not currently in there, but it's just down here. To release it, you'd pull up this orange handle on the front to release it from the cassette, uh, cassette holder. Then down on the floor, de uh, down or on top of the cassette here, you'll see an orange neck that turns out 90 degrees, so you can tip the waist away. The grey cap is a measure for your pink and your blue fluid. And on the back of the cassette, you can see an orange pressure relief button here, so when you're tipping the waist away, it doesn't spit and splat it back at you. Coming around the back of the van, you've got your two wind down legs as I described before. You've got a storage locker from underneath the bed on the rear, right, right, left hand side rear of the caravan. Motor mover and wheel nuts again, and then your wheel, sorry. And you've got your storage locker from underneath the bed at the front of the van, and your barbecue gas point and the last wind down leg. Coming on to the inside of the caravan now. Just gonna, just gonna turn the heating off for a second. So above the door, as you walk into the caravan, you'll see your main control panel. So you've got your main power button here, to turn the power on. As you see, the power goes off, with the symbol appears here. And then you'll press and hold the power button, and the control panel will come back on. Top left hand side here, you have your water pump switch, which I'll come back to in a moment. You then have your lighting for above the cabinets inside of the van. Awning light, oh sorry, awning light for the outside of the caravan, and your light for above the cabinets. And down the bottom here, you've got your select for which battery you want to use, or the battery you want to run the 12 volt systems from. So the button here is for the 12 volt battery on board the caravan, so you'd need to make sure that is illuminated when you're on site. And when you're towing down the road, you'd need to press the button here, so it illuminates green here once you're connected to the car. As long as you have the right connections on your car, essentially this will allow the battery to charge on board the caravan, and it'll also allow you to use the fridge as a cool box. 
I've got some other settings down the side here, which for these we do advise you read the manual that comes with the caravan. So the first thing we're going to do is fill the water system up. So underneath the seat on the front right hand side of the van, you will actually find a hot water tank. And just down there on the floor, you'll also see a yellow valve. That yellow valve is the drain down valve for the water system. Now if that valve is in the position it's in now, which is flat with the floor, you'll be able to fill the water system up. And if it's upright and pointing towards the bottom of the seat, it will drain all of the water out of the system onto the floor underneath the van. So like I said, you do need to make sure that is flat with the floor prior to filling the system up. Once that valve is flat with the floor, as it is now, you can come over to all the taps on board the caravan. You'll open all the taps up on the hot side of the water system. Once all these taps are open on the hot side of the water system, you can come over to the pump switch above the door, turn on the water pump, and the water system will start filling up. Once the water system is completely full, you'll have water running out of every tap continuously on board the caravan. You'll notice it flashes green here to indicate the pump is running. Now we have water running out of every tap continuously, we can shut all of the taps back off and we can show you how to warm the water system up. So in the wardrobe area, you'll find that you've got your 240 trip switches for the 240 systems on board the caravan. Little tip for you, if you hit the test switch, and this little switch drops down, it means you have mains power coming into the caravan. Below that, you'll see you have three other switches. You have your space heater, water heater on electric, so you need to have that switch on for the electric water heating to work. The space heater switch you'll need to have on, so it puts power to the control panel on the opposite side of the van. And then on the end here, you have your battery charger switch, which again, you need to have turned on, so it allows the battery charger on board the caravan to charge the 12 volt battery. But as you can see here in the center, the water will now be warming up on mains power. You can also run the water heating on gas and that's where the control panel on the opposite side of the van comes in. So you have an ultra store switch on the opposite side of the caravan just here, which allows the uh, gas heating to work. So you spin this out to grey dial to the flame symbol and it will self ignite on gas as long as the gas bottle is turned on. You will need to have that cover removed on the outside for it to work. The green light is an indicator to say it has ignited on gas and a red light that's just about to appear any second now is a fail light to let you know it has failed to ignite on gas. You can control the temperature of the water on gas between 30 and 70 degrees of water temperature and we do advise when you're running the uh, or using the caravan for the shower etc that you do have the gas on so it boosts the water system while you are showering. To isolate the gas supply you spin it back to the zero position at the side here. Above that you have your main power switch for the heating on board the caravan. Now to operate the heating, like I said, you'll need to have the heater switch turned on in the wardrobe and then you'll select 500, 1000 or 2000 watts. What, what this relates to is the amount of power coming into the caravan from the caravan site you're on. So for instance, the 500 watts is the lowest setting you've got and essentially the heating hot water system won't be as efficient as what it would be on the higher 1000 or 2000 watts. It will depend on what caravan site you're on to what you set this to when you are on site. You can control the temperature of the heating on this dial in the centre between 1 and 9. The higher you go, the hotter the heating will be. You can also operate the heating on gas. So you have a dial here on the right hand side top of the heater. That you spin around between 10 and 9. Hold down the gas valve and once it ignites on gas, you'll have a pilot light in this window down the front of the heater. Once it's been ignited for 5-10 seconds, you can slowly release the gas valve and control the temperature of the heater on the dial on top. And to turn the gas supply back off, you spin it back to the off position just here. On the opposite side of the heater, you'll see that you have a fan speed dial, a bit like you have in your car between 1 and 5. The dot in the centre here indicates the heat can come out the front of the heater. The continuous blown air is on the left hand side which allows the heat to come out the vents around the caravan and it also can act as a cool air fan. It's not air conditioning, it's just a cool air fan. And then you've got the A on the right hand side here which is automatic blown air which will cut in and out with the thermostat on board the caravan. You've then got your option for your heating, uh, for your fridge sorry. Okay. I'm just going to shut the roof blind so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So, to operate the fridge, you've got a power button on the front here, which you press the power on. The fridge will load up. 
and you've got three ways of running the fridge. So you've got gas, as you can see now on the screen. If it fails to ignite on gas, it's going to flash the blue button, uh, the blue light at the bottom here. If it's solid, it means it has ignited, and that is essentially your pilot light. It will also come up with a nine and a spanner symbol here, just on the right hand side, to let you know it has failed to ignite if it does. On the left hand side, you have a grey button where you can change the power source you want to use. So you've got the option to run 240 mains here, and if it's working on 240 mains, it'll illuminate blue at the bottom again. Then you have the option to run 12 volt mode. So the 12 volt mode is for the power coming from the car to the caravan. Now I did allude to this before when we were talking about the control panel above the door. What this essentially does is it allows the cool box to work, the fridge to work as a cool box as you're traveling down the road. Um, but like I said, if you haven't got the right connection on the car, then it will not operate as a cool box. Microwave, hob, grill and oven all work very much like household appliances. The only difference is being is if you haven't got 240 volt mains coming to the caravan, then the electric hob and the microwave will not work. They are only 240 mains powered. Igniter on the front, but like I said, when you're here on site, ignite everything up so you can see everything is working as it should. Coming through into the bathroom now. Toilet system is very easy to use. An electric flush on top here, which allows you to flush the toilet system. Toilet's full indicator light that illuminates red when the toilet waste cassette is completely full. The toilet seat itself actually turns for your convenience. When you are removing the toilet waste cassette from underneath the caravan, you need to make sure the toilet's in the straight on position. And then below the toilet, you have the gray waste handle here, which you need to push over to the far farthest away from the door of the caravan to the wall at the back. To allow the waste into the cassette. You'll also need this in the closed position completely when you are trying to remove that toilet waste cassette as if not it could potentially damage the toilet waste cassette itself. So that's the end of the handover inside of the caravan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto the outside of the caravan now and demonstrate how the motor mover works. But we thank we appreciate your business and we look forward to seeing you here on site soon when you collect your caravan. Like I said this is a Sterling Eccles Elite. Thank you again. Continue watching for the hand, uh, for the motor mover demonstration. So to engage the motor mover on the wheels, you have your motor mover engagement bar that you'll put into place on the side of the van. You'll pull the bar over, push it over, and lock it into place. So I'm doing this one-handed, unfortunately, at the moment. As you can see, the motor mover is now locked in place. You'll then come around to the other side of the caravan. And in the locker on the opposite side of the van, you'll see a red power switch. Now you need to turn this red power key 90, degree, 90 degrees clockwise, clock, clockwise, sorry. Then press the two green buttons on the controller and you'll get a green light appear at the bottom here when it is activated. The solid green light on the left-hand side means it is ready to go. The point at the front here indicates the front of the caravan. So you've got forwards, backwards, turn, turn, turn and turn obviously these are the backwards turns and then you've got your reverse option just here as well so you can turn the controller back off you'll press the two green buttons if you don't turn it back on like i've just done there we go after a few seconds of off we'll then turn the power back off in the side locker and then disengage the motor mover before you travel down the road. Now when you do disengage your motor mover, I would advise you hold it with both hands. I'm just gonna try and do it with one hand, but it will bite. And then that is the motor mover disengaged from the wheel. Again, while you are here during the handover, you've got a leg winder in the front locker, so put the legs up on the van and disconnect the power and the water and have a go with the motor mover whilst you're here. Thank you again, bye bye.